Awesome. Happy Friday afternoon. We're getting into the home stretch here. My name is Sandy Vance, and I'm from Aegis.net, and I'm here with my taller, smarter friend, Richard Edema, who is kind of the mastermind behind our product. How many of you all have seen Touchstone before? All right, all right, so about half, that's good. I'm glad that you know something about it. Aegis has been in the business of supporting interoperability initiatives for about 10 years. We've actually put together uh, testing tools for HL7, for IHE profiles, um, supported the Sequoia project for a long time. So um, Richard and team have been around for quite some time and I've just recently joined them um, to help bring this product to all of you who are working with FIRE. So, I started my career, uh, for those of you who don't know, at a healthcare system where I was building, uh, I was an interface analyst, and I was building messages with V2 and um, configuring cold feeds to try to get the right information to the right providers at the right times. And for years, I banged my head against the wall trying to get companies to stop charging us for custom integration because it was so painful uh, to get interoperability to happen. So in 2009, when I learned about integrating the healthcare enterprise and that I could go to HIMSS and be part of the macro level solution to this problem, I was all in. And I ran to HIMSS and I supported interoperability initiatives for about eight years. During that time, I worked with a number of vendors uh, to build implementation profiles that harmonize standards like HL7 uh, so that organizations like you could implement them into your products. And that was a, a great process for the time. But what we have now is the opportunity to use FIRE as a single solution that is faster, and I think that you all can agree with me on that, right? Um, but we've got some challenges ahead of us as, this, as FIRE becomes normative, because if we we continue to leverage the flexibility of that, but yet don't standardize the implementations of it, we're gonna run into problems. So there are a number of challenges that we face. One of those, and I'm sure that you have found this already, is that there are a, a lot of different frameworks using custom languages um, in order to test fire implementations. Touchstone uses XML exclusively, and Richard's gonna show you how that works in just a couple of minutes. Um, a lot of the open source tool sets that are on the market are incomplete. Look, I'm a fan of peer-to-peer -peer testing. I supported it for almost 10 years and got as many organizations I could to get involved in that. But where we're at now is a time where we can automate about 80% of this integration testing and really make true interoperability happen across the healthcare spectrum. One and done testing versus cont continuous testing. Uh, certification programs across the board, again, have been um, in this zone of they test one time and as long as you can make it work once you're done. Why? Why is that? We have the capability to interrupt messages and evaluate those on an ongoing basis to make sure that fire's working for all continuously. So some of the key features involved in Touchstone um, are that it is cloud-based. It can be used 24-7, anytime, anywhere, by anyone. We have multi-version support for HL7 Fire. And when I say that, Richard, how long have you been at these Connectathons? Oh, good grief, since 2013. Okay, so a long time, uh, right? Five, five years. I think I was like in seventh grade or something then. But anyway, he's been, <laughs> this guy's been around. You know, they, I think Touchstone, I think, is the only tool that supports versions of fire since the very, I think, SCU2 is the first one. And we continue to support all of those on an ongoing basis so that as your products evolve, the testing will evolve right along with it. Implementation guide level test script customization. All right, how many of you have ever been involved in writing an implementation guide? or contributing to the writing of an invitation. This is such a critical time for FHIR. We're working so hard to help um, users understand how to constrain these resources in FHIR, and it's so important that we don't overdo it and that we're helping organizations find the profiles that are already available so that they're not reinventing the wheel every time they go to do an implementation. So that's a really key thing that I want you to take away from here about Touchstone is that this isn't about just pointing back to the fire resources that are already available for testing. This is about being able to customize your test scripts 
so that they meet your needs or your program needs depending on where you're at in the process. We support both fire implementers, developers like yourselves, as well as programs, um, the DaVinci Project. Right now we're working on a couple of test scripts for implementation guides so that when they put those test scripts into place for their implementation guides, any developer will be able to come test with Touchstone and see immediately what they need to evolve in their product so that they meet the requirements of that implementation guide. And that's the goal. Um, and then, of course, we have this robust reference implementation, so wildfire, which I think Richard will touch on briefly. So one of the key things about Touchstone is our ability to report. So we have this dashboard. You've probably seen these starbursts before. They will allow you to report your progress, whether it be at the fire resource level and how conformant you are to those resources, or how conformant you are to the implementation guide, or finally, how conformant you are to, I forget the third one, resources, implementation guide, and something yeah. else. Well. The RESTful API. Anything you want. No, I'm just kidding. It was, <laughs> so there, there are three, three different ways, basically, you can look at this. But, oh, conformance statement, your own conformance statement, excuse me. So when you agree to implement FIRE and you say, this is what we're going to conform to, do you want to be tested on the things you're not supporting? No. You want to be able to show the world what you're doing and how you're doing next to what your, what your goal is, not all this stuff over here that you never tried to support, right? So this reporting tool will actually allow you as an organization to send your results via permalink to your customers so that they can see how conformant you are to in each of those three areas, which we think is critical. This transparency is what's really going to make this standard usable for all. So the flexibility is great, the speed is great, but we've got to make sure we keep it a standard because that's what HL7 is all about, right? So um, the other thing about this, this dashboard is that for programs like DaVinci um, or other organizations, currently we have um, a government-run program in the Netherlands that is building test scripts in Touchstone in order to support a government-funded program. And the EHRs come in, and they test against it. And then they can send their permalink to the program manager. So all of the program um, managers know exactly how the testers are doing against their implementation guides. And that enables them, as the program evolves, to tweak those implementation guides as necessary, if necessary. I'm not going to go too far into this dashboard, because Richard's going to show you um, it live, which is a little bit more exciting. But the bottom line is, we have enabled this tool to deliver to you exactly, it's a roadmap for your product. When you're trying to implement the FHIR um, resources, you can see exactly what you need to change in order to get your product to be 100% conformant. This is just an example um, of how the use of Touchstone has grown over the last few years um, and how um, this, the support for the various versions of Fire has also grown. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Richard and let him show you the product so that you can kind of see at a glance how easy it is to log in and just try it out. We do have kind of a, a, a free zone so that you can um, sign in. It's www.touchstone.com. Start an account up and uh, go in and play with it. Just see what you think. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback. Right. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as Sandy mentioned, we've been supporting the HL7 Fire Connectathon since 2015. So that was Connectathon 10, uh, where we had DSTU2 first officially released. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can get over to here. Yay! And let's see. Actually, where is? Oh, I missed it. Hang on. There we go. All right, I'm going to open up a new tab. And so the uh, home uh, URL here is just simply touchstone.com. And that will redirect you to our cloud-based hosting environment, which is touchstone.aegis.net at touchstone. Uh, so this is the initial landing page that you'll go on. So some nice information here about uh, what we do and uh, some releases that we've done. We've just recently released Touchstone 4.0. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've introduced here is not only support for the most current R4 ballot release, uh, FHIR 3.5.0, but also we now support another domain called CDS Hooks. Anybody know what CDS Hooks is? Yay. So we actually now can field test scripts 
for that domain as well. So I'm going to. Five minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Unless we're going by the clock and then there we, we have go. 11 minutes. All right. <laughs> Wayne says no. <laughs> 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 no, 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 that's okay. Roll over. So, so this is just showing you uh, the initial screen where you will probably end up when you go to touchdown. So this is showing you on the far right over there the folder structure we have for all of the test scripts that we fielded. Uh, the folder structure, these are all the publicly available ones. Uh, and you can see that we prefix the folders with the fire specification that they belong to. So uh, we reverse or descend, uh, sort descending here so the most current is at the top. So just to kind of show you for Connectathon 19, coming up tomorrow, yay, uh, we've already fielded a few uh, of scripts for the various test tracks, patient and terminology, and we'll probably be adding more as we get into the Connectathon as well. But this is how you navigate through and see what the test scripts are and what are available, depending upon what you want to do. So um, before I actually run something here, I do want to jump over to that conformance screen, because I do want to show you and I'm going to go over to the 301 spec and choose wildfire for 31. So in September, okay, so after we fielded this, I've now run quite a few of the tests that we got fielded for 3.5, or sorry, for 3.0. Uh, you'll notice the Connectathon 19 is pretty well blank because I haven't run anything against it yet. So one of the nice things about this interface is that I can come over here and just click and this actually provides a launching point for test scripts as well. I've already chosen my test system, which is my wildfire server. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this and just hit execute selected. And it's off and running. And so basically, I'm going to come back up here and just refresh this. And we should hopefully see things start to progress. So this is just showing how we interactively uh, show you your results as you progress through testing, even here on this dashboard. So I can refresh, and we can see that keeps progressing. And hey, we made it all the way through those four test scripts. Historically, if I go back to the history pad, uh, tab here, or page here, I can see the tests run here. The very last one that I've executed is right here. So I can navigate to the results at that test execution level, which comprised four individual test scripts. I can drill down into an individual test script and look at its results and drill down into the details even further. And this is basically what we wanted to do to support the developers, you out there developing your fire applications. We're basically introspecting everything about the exchange that happened. And this was a very simple um, test that was executed here. We're just registering a new patient. If you look at the patient track in the Connectathon, this is one of the first tests that you're going to be doing. How do I create a patient? And how do I know that it was done correctly? Well, here you have a test script that actually can be executed automatically through the interface, and we can show you the results. What was sent by the tool, the request, along with the response that your server sent back, and then we're going to validate all that to make sure that everything was done uh, according to the specification. And as you can see, we have a nice 100% success here. So um, how am I doing on time? You've got about one minute. I've got one minute, yay. <laughs> OK. So um, just another couple uh, little things here. So we store these results on a monthly basis. So if we scroll back in time to July, I can see uh, at that time Connectathon 17 was the current Connectathon. So that's why you see that change there. But this was the slide that uh, Sandy had up earlier. But what I wanted to show you here is that my server is at 90% based on all of the tests available for this particular version of Fire. Is that an accurate representation of how, cap or how you know, I'm conformant to the spec? Well, remember, we have that capability statement. So we can go introspect that and use it to filter our results here. So I'm just going to check the box. And I'm going to filter out everything that I don't support in terms of a test script. And so you can see my real result is 100% conformant to what I say I support in my Fire server. So it's just an example of how we can leverage the tool to make sure that you're being graded basically on what you say you support. So just wanted to show that. 
Yeah, how are we doing? Probably need to wrap up. I think yep. if Wayne had music, he'd be playing yes. it like at the Emmys. Okay. So I, I guess. So um, just just one one more. So it's self registration. So you can go to Touchstone.com, hit the register, and uh, create an account. Uh, we have extensive online documentation. So uh, please avail yourself of that. And if uh, you need additional uh, help and support, uh, please contact Touchstone Support at Aegis.net. So. Thanks, everybody. We'll all be right. at the Connected on all weekend, so uh, yep. please give it a shot. Thank you.